Good afternoon. It's uh, my, pr my privilege to welcome Dr. Susan Daniels uh, to the Autism Today conference. Uh, Dr. Daniels is the Acting Director of Office of Autism Research Coordination, and she provides management for the Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee and oversees strategic planning, policy analysis, communications, operations, and logistical planning activities to support the work for this committee. Uh, Dr. Daniels received her PhD in molecular and cellular biology from Brandeis University, and her doctoral work focused on how the interaction of genes and the environment influences the function of the sensory nervous system. Uh, Dr. Daniels will be giving us an update from the National Institutes of Health, and her, the title of her presentation is Charting the Course for Federal-Private Partnership to, Acceler to Accelerate Autism Research. Susan, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks so much, Lee. It's great to be here. <coughs> Um, I'm pleased to talk to you today about the Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee, which is a federal advisory committee that advises the Secretary of Health and Human Services and the Department of Health and Human Services on autism research. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the Combating Autism Act, which you've probably already heard a little bit about through this conference. Um, the, the goals of the Combating Autism Act of 2006 were to accelerate the pace of scientific discovery and enhance federal coordination of autism efforts. And this law, um, passed in 2006, covers many different um, activities of the federal agencies and encourages coordination. And the key part of this coordination is the establishment of the Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee as the coordinating body. And this committee consists of federal officials from all the agencies that work on autism, as well as public members um, who represent uh, people with ASD, parents, advocates, leaders, providers, and other stakeholders in the autism community. The Combating Autism Reauthorization Act passed in 2011 to reauthorize the Combating Autism Act. And this renewed the Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee so that it could continue through 2014. Um, this is a list of all the new members of the committee. The committee has been um, waiting for appointments of new members and will be reconvening in July of this year. And so this list shows all of the federal members and the new public members as well. So in red, you can see all of the new members or new agencies that are represented. And in black are the ones that um, have been previously serving. And we're very excited that there will be many new voices added to the committee and that it's a very broad committee. And you can see that over half of the committee is public members, which is great because they will provide very important input from the community to the federal government. The statutory responsibilities of the IACC include advising HHS Secretary Sebelius on all matters related to autism and public participation in decisions related to autism, um, establishing autism research priorities, including developing and annually updating a strategic plan for autism research that can be used by federal agencies as well as private partners to chart the course for autism research and services activities. Um, the IACC is also assigned the role of monitoring federal activities and analyzing research trends. And this committee took that a little bit further and not only monitors federal activities, but also ma monitors the activities of private organizations that are working on autism research so that we get a full picture for the committee of the landscape of research and what's happening so that we can have a better idea of where to go next. The IACC also communicates advances in the field to Congress, to the public, to other um, federal officials. And to do this, they publish an annual summary of advances in autism research. And so you can see the, the covers of the three types of publications we put out annually. The next meeting of the IACC will be held on July 10th, 2012 in downtown Washington, DC. Uh, the IACC will be announcing the details of this meeting in the Federal Register on the IACC website via a listserv list and Twitter. And all meetings of the IACC are open to the public. The, um, and they are also available by webcast and phone. The, the big meetings are available by webcast. And if you'd like to receive notifications about these meetings so that you can stay up to date on all activities of the IACC, 
via email or Twitter, just email iaccpublicinquiries at mail.nih.gov and request to be added to the list. Let me tell you a little bit about the IACC strategic plan, which is that blueprint I mentioned that helps guide both federal research and the activities of private partners together. The IACC does not have a budget for funding research itself, but provides this document as guidance that allows federal agencies that have budgets that can be used for autism research to um, make decisions wisely about how to allocate their autism resources and private partners, um, to how they can work together with the federal government and on their own to further research. The purpose of um, the committee, as I mentioned, is to focus, coordinate, and accelerate high quality research. And this, this plan answers urgent questions that the community has about autism. There are 78 objectives currently in the strategic plan, so this strategic plan has grown. And as Lee, as a former member of the committee can attest it. It's uh, been an evolving document and the committee has worked hard on trying to address community needs and this document will continue to be a living document as each year the committee will identify new priorities and, and determine which ones have been um, not necessarily, I don't know if work could ever be done on autism, you know, completed on autism, but which ones are um, more or less complete and which things are new emerging needs that mm -hmm. need to be addressed. Um, some of the new objectives that um, arose in 2011 in the strategic plan included research to address the issues that affect nonverbal people with ASD, health promotion issues about general health for people with ASD that might be special to that population, and safety issues that affect the community. The specific research questions in the IACC plan include um, when should I be concerned, which addresses diagnosis, how can I understand what is happening, which un addresses the underlying biology of autism, what caused this to happen and how can this be prevented, which addresses causes and risk factors for autism, which treatments and interventions will help, which addresses treatments and interventions, where can I turn for services, addressing service issues that affect the community. And the com uh, committee made a deliberate decision to um, split off a special section on lifespan issues. Um, and the question for that is, what does the future hold, particularly for adults? Because they felt that although this is highly related to services, it's a special issue that deserves emphasis, and um, especially in terms of dealing with adult transition issues for people and issues across the entire lifespan, which um, is not completely understood and is uh, a current area of emerging research. And then the seventh area of the strategic plan, what other infrastructure and surveillance needs, surveillance needs must be met, which addresses infrastructure, data sharing, and surveillance. Our office is going to be releasing a new document this summer, the 2010 IACC Portfolio Analysis. And this document analyzes the ASD research portfolio across both federal agencies and private organizations. And it helps the IACC fulfill its congressional mandate to monitor progress in fulfilling the objectives of the, of the strategic plan. The document is used by the committee to identify gaps and opportunities in research so that they can do a good job in updating the plan each year. The full report is expected to be released this summer and we look forward to sharing that with you, but I have some preliminary data that I can share with you now. So in this slide here, um, this is the 2010 federal and, autism, um, federal and private autism funding graph that shows the total amount of funding, which was $408 million across 18 different funders. And the overall increase since last year was $93 million. However, um, we want to um, explain that that's not a true increase because really that extra $93 million was because we did a more thorough job of identifying additional funding that was already taking place. And so we feel that this is a more complete picture of spending across um, federal agencies and private organizations. And you can see that 80% of the funds came from federal sources and 18% from private. 
This is a list of all the organizations that we uh, received data from. And in red, you can see that there's a heavy investment from private organizations in autism, as we know that um, the community has taken a huge role in promoting and doing autism research and, and supporting the needs of the community. And so this is a great example of how the federal government and the community act together for autism. In this set of charts, you can see um, how funding is distributed across the areas of the strategic plan that I just mentioned. In 2010, you can see that most areas of the pie chart are fairly even for all funders. So that includes diagnosis, biology, risk factors, treatments, services. Lifespan um, is much smaller. However, it's, it's sort of a, a slice of services, if you, if you think about it that way, that the committee just wanted to emphasize by separating it. And infrastructure. I'm also including some data about NIH because I think some folks may be interested in knowing what has been happening with NIH funding as it's the largest funder of autism research in the US. Um, in this graph, you can see that most of the funding is distributed across areas that relate to the mission of NIH for biomedical research. And so services and lifespan is much smaller, but all of the areas that address biology and medical issues are, are larger. And the largest proportion was for basic biology, followed by risk factors. In 2009 and 2010, Congress provided additional funds to many federal agencies, including the NIH, um, through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or the Stimulus Package. And so these special funds, um, part of them were from NIH, were allocated towards autism research. There were a, a couple of other agencies also that we monitored that um, received ERA funding that was used for autism research, including the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality and the National Science Foundation. And so aggregated together, this pie chart shows where those ERA funds went. And you can see that the largest proportion was for risk factor research um, and that the services and lifespan areas were a little bit expanded over the normal um, pie chart that you saw before. This indicates that with these special funds, um, these federal agencies were really trying to address specific areas in the strategic plan that were emphasized because the committee had identified risk factors and services and lifespan issues as particularly important, and so more funding went in those directions. In this chart, just um, so that you can get a sense of where funding has been going over time, at NIH at least, uh, you can see that there's been a steady increase in autism research funding since 1996. And then in the years 2009 and 2010, you can see how much the extra stimulus package funding added to NIH in green. And then the last two bars are in gray because they are estimated funding for fiscal year 2012 and 2013. And you can see that currently that's plateauing a little bit because of the current budget situation, but overall there has been an increase in autism funding. For NIH, this graph also shows how the rate of change has um, happened for autism research and that you can, you can see that autism research has been one of the most growing fields at NIH in comparison with some other disease areas. And especially um, in the years since the Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee has been in existence. In April, the committee re uh, released its annual IACC Summary of Advances in Research, identifying the 20 most significant advances in research and services um, published in 2011. These uh, research advances cover many different areas, including prevalence, basic biology, risk factors, interventions, and lifespan issues. And in the next few slides, which I don't expect everyone to read carefully, but when these slides are posted, if somebody wanted to go back, you could look. Um, are, there are some, several of the advances are, are listed um, in detail, and it covered everything from a new type of well baby checkup that uh, can really save time in the doctor's office and allow early identification of children at risk for autism, several different areas of advances in genetics, 
um, several advances in the areas of identifying risk factors, other ki kinds of risk factors for autism spectrum disorder, a systematic review of medical treatments that's been used widely for um, understanding where we are in terms of research towards treatments, educational uh, uh, clinical trials. There's, there was an interesting study on post high school services use among adults showing that there is this cliff after which uh, young folks with autism who are finishing high school have a difficult time obtaining the services that they need going on and identifying this as a key area for further um, research and active intervention through many sources, private and federal. Some new research on epidemiology and prevalence. And so this was quite a varied summary this year that covered all of the areas of our strategic plan. And I wanted to tell you a little bit also about some of the issues that have been discussed at recent IACC meetings. In the past year and a half or so, the committee has covered a number of important issues, including wandering, which addresses children who uh, display wandering behavior, special interests um, in areas that may be uh, may not be safe and, and have a tendency to wander away from caregivers and safe environments and um, be exposed to possible injury or mortality. And so the committee was very concerned about this issue and wrote a letter to the secretary about this, issuing some recommendations. That letter is up on our website. There was a workshop that we did on seclusion and restraint issues that affect children with disabilities. And the Department of Education has recently released a report and some new guidelines on this area and, and recommendations were made to the Secretary of Health and Human Services by our committee. There was a presentation on autism prevalence in the Somali population in Minnesota and several federal and private organizations got together and are funding research in this. There have been uh, presentations and discussions on bullying, adult transition, essential be health benefits mortality related to epilepsy and autism, and on therapeutics development. So you can see that it's a broad variety of topics. And so we're just waiting to see what the new committee is going to do. So what's next? Stay tuned. The development of subcommittees will occur at our next meeting. We'll review data from these analyses that will inform the committee of next steps. We'll be updating the strategic plan, planning various activities and workshops, and identifying new and the latest emerging issues for action by the committee. Members of the public are always welcome to attend the meetings of the IACC and to share input in writing or by sharing oral public comment at meetings. And so watch for information on our website on how to do that. All of the publications I've mentioned and additional information about the committee are available at our website, www.iacc.hhs.gov. And I'd like to acknowledge the chair of our committee, Dr. Thomas Insel, who's director of the National Institute of Mental Health, and all of my staff who work very hard at supporting this committee. So with that, I'd, I'd also like to give Lee Grossman here a, an opportunity to comment on his experience having been a member of this committee for a decade, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's been a decade. And, and first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, what your work have done. As you said at the close of your presentation, how hard uh, the staff works to keep this committee in, uh, moving forward. And the, the work that you do is just amazing. It, it really is phenomenal uh, to draw on all the uh, different uh, interests and agendas that are presented and then put it into a document that is uh, useful to the federal government, to research institutions, and to the general public is, is truly remarkable. Uh, my history with the IAC goes back to its really original foundation. There, there was an IAC that was around that came out of the Children's Health Act of 2000, and uh, this uh, original IACC um, did uh, a quite remarkable work. In 2003, it uh, had the first uh, autism summit uh, and, um, uh, that brought together uh, a very, very large uh, audience of uh, the current uh, public uh, 
opinion leaders, and uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a wonderful conference, really looking for the first time at autism across a lifespan and addressing research uh, goals. Uh, in 2005, we published a, uh, a services roadmap, which I found to be a breakthrough document because it acknowledged, f for the first time um, in writing, the failures of the current systems to address the needs of the autism community, and uh, that was very important. I, I think what was most profound to me about being involved with the IAC was just in, was the effort from the autism community to rally, to pull itself together, to unite, to get the legislation passed, uh, not only in 2000 and 2001, but also in 2005 and then in this last round last year to keep this very important committee and the funding in place. Um, in the last administration, the, o the one di disability or condition specific legislation that was passed and signed by the last administration was this one that created the uh, Interagency uh, Autism Coordinating Committee. Uh, and that speaks highly for the dedication, the passion of the community to unite around a common goal and to produce uh, what is very worthwhile and significant for moving our agenda forward. Um, it's been an honor and a humbling experience for me to be involved over the last 10 years. And I want to thank all those that are involved, the community at large, for what they've done to keep it going. And uh, I believe that this is uh, the committee that will forward, that will do the most to forward the agenda for the entire autism community in the future. Uh, so I want to thank you for what you're doing and what Dr. Insel and his leadership has produced and uh, thank the community for their efforts as well. Thanks, Lee. We've definitely appreciated having your input on this committee over the past decade and look forward to seeing what the committee is going to do in the future. Um, are there any questions? Um, um, I, I have... Um, uh, one question that I'd like to ask, uh, and this is regarding uh, the uh, funding levels um, uh, at NIH. Um, uh, and if, if you could go back and show what the funding levels are going to be for the, f for the next couple of sure. years and, and maybe address that, because I know that we're in very difficult uh, economic times. Yes. Um, Here we go. That the figure. Okay, so basically what I'm looking at here on the graph shows that the next two years is, is essentially the NIH funding will be flat. That's right. Okay. So that's what's estimated because of the current budget situation. Mm -hmm. But something that's been apparent is that whenever there was new money available that autism has been quick to be a priority because everyone realizes how deeply this affects the community. Mm -hmm. Well, and it clearly shows that uh, we uh, received a, a great deal of uh, added funding uh, when the stimulus money became available, which right. was put to very, very good use. And it, it was amazing how quickly the government was able to expend the money and, and to put it into proper places. Um, w what do you see as the uh, future of the IAC? Well, we're really looking forward to continuing to this, this work through 2014. We're excited that the committee has expanded and mm -hmm. is representing even more points of view from the community that now the committee is over half public, mm -hmm. which we think is wonderful because it's so important to have input from the public and from all of these different diverse perspectives to inform the federal government as well as the entire collective partnership of federal and private organizations doing autism research and, and helping with services. So. We're really looking forward to all of that and, and expect that new fresh ideas will be coming forward and new challenges and we have more people to work together on all mm -hmm. of these. Well, very good. On behalf of uh, Autism Today, I, I can't thank you enough and the National Institutes of Health for being involved with this conference and thank you and good luck going forward with the IAC. Thanks so much, thank Lee. You.